Hey everyone, Allison here with Lofty Loops Yarns. This is the Lofty Loops Yarns podcast and I am coming to you on a Sunday afternoon. Um, it is, August, uh, nope, it's not August, it's September 16th and it's been a couple weeks since I recorded a podcast. Life seems to have gotten just insanely busy lately and um, I just, I haven't been able to take the time to sit down and record something. So I apologize if you were looking for the podcast last weekend, um, but I definitely wanted to carve out some time to sit down with you guys and chat just a little bit about knitting and some yarn goodness and things of that nature, uh, with you guys today. So let's get started. Um, again, I am Allison and you will be seeing some of the things that I work on knitting wise, um. I don't think I have any spinning to show, um, and there'll just be a little bit of uh, shop talk um, because I am the hand dyer behind Lofty Loops Yarns. You can see all my yarn at LoftyLoopsYarns.com, um, so I will be sharing just a little bit uh, towards the end of this, but um, yes, if you are a new viewer, uh, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. and. Many apologies for skipping a week. Uh, if you would like to follow me on the social medias, um, you can find all the places that I'm most active. I'll put it right here. There will also be clickable links down below um, in the show notes, so you can just click to head straight over there. But I am most active on Instagram uh, as well as Ravelry, and we have a Ravelry group for the podcast if that's something you are into checking out. Um, Right now in the podcast group, we are running a couple different cows. One of the cows is going to be wrapping up at the end of the month or early October, and that is the Summer Sock Club cow. And the Summer Sock Club is a group of patterns, sock patterns, uh, by Melinda of Rye Flower Knits and uh, the Rye Flower Knits podcast. And we have just been knitting on socks all summer. So that's been really fun. And we have the last of the socks that we're knitting on for September. So I believe October 5th um, is when the cowl ends. So if you've been knitting along with us and you haven't already, get your finished socks from the Sock Club into my FO thread in my Ravelry group and then in Melinda's Ravelry group as well to double dip. Um, and then we will be drawing for some winners shortly after October 5th. So definitely uh, don't forget to do that. And I am also running another cal in the uh, podcast group and that is just for people who are knitting with my monthly mystery clubs. So if you have been a receiver of the old mystery club, which was Sweeney Todd inspired, um, or if you are now in the new mystery club where you, I believe, I think, I think there's only been a couple installments so far. Um, if you received any of that and you are knitting items with them, then you can go ahead and throw those FOs in there. That's going to be a long running cal. It will be open probably for quite a while. And I think I'm just going to draw winners quarterly. So every three months I'll go in and draw some winners from that. So check those out if you're into cals. I am very loosey goosey with my requirements. If you are entering another cal, I don't mind if you're double dipping or triple dipping or whatever. Um, and for the, the Lofty Loops Mystery Cal, um, it can be a whip. It can already be a finished object. If you have it, just toss it in there. That's fine. There's no start or end date to that. So I think that's all of the podcast news I have. Um, so I'm going to jump into almost finished objects. <laughs> um, almost finished not quite there yet, uh, but this episode is going to be very sock heavy. I have been knitting socks like they're going out of style, and I think one of those reasons is because I know fall is almost here and winter is coming, and I love having toasty socks on my feet, um, so I am just knitting all the socks right now. So, my, I say almost finished because they don't have heels yet, but they are ready. Um, these are my Desert Vista Dye Work socks that I've been working on for the past couple episodes, I think. Um, so they're finally done. Um, I've obviously finished kitchener the toes. They're all ready to go. Um, they're just, they're marked for heels. So I got to throw Afterthought heels in there, um, and then these will be ready 
to wash and block and put on my feet. But um, the yarn is, again, Desert Vista Dye Works, and it is the Zombody Walking on the Sun. And they're so fun. They're so bright and cheery and fall-like. I just think of like corn or maybe candy corn and pumpkins. And that's why, that's why I really gravitated towards these when I saw them. So I thought they would be perfect to get in the fall spirit. Um, I did knit these on a US1, which is my typical go-to. I knit them cuffed down on DPNs for the most part. Um, a two by two rib, which I always do. I think I knit 25 stitches for the cuffs. Um, and then I actually counted the rows on these as I was working. So they should match exactly row for row, um, which is something I've never done before. So that's kind of fun. So I know that the heels are going in in the exact same row um, anytime before I've just eyeballed it. Um, and then I worked the toe down to where I believe I had 16 stitches left and then kitchener it closed. And they don't match exactly, but I'm okay with that. I don't need them to match. So I'm really excited to get some heels in and I was almost, I was really hoping to get the heels in in time to share them with you guys. Um, here on the podcast, but like I said, my life has been insanely busy and I can't stop working on other socks, <laughs> so I'm taking a break from these, um, but that's all right. And my little marker on here is from the Quarter of Craft, who is Hannah, and I just love this little beaded, little beaded stitch marker. She's so amazing at making these little guys, and I just love them. So again, Getting in the fall Halloween spirit for sure. Um, and I was going to weigh this, but didn't get a chance. But here's how much I have left over. I mean, those are two pair of calf length socks. Like, I don't go all the way up. Maybe calf is a bad, maybe, maybe that's a bad measurement. But um, I do probably this much three inches, three, four inches above my ankle is my kind of go-to length for socks. So I still have probably an, at least enough for another shorty pair for sure. So that's really exciting. Um, and that's going to bring me right into works in progress because it's not technically a finished object. It's still, it's an almost finished work in progress. <laughs> Um, but since I cast those off, I of course had to start a new pair, um, and it is living in my sushi bag by Sugar Tots. And you guys have seen this bag many, many times. And inside, I have started working on a brand new sock. So these are obviously toe up. Um, this is the Follow Your Path socks by Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. And I just wanted to have something, something patterned that was like an easy sit down kind of waffly pattern um, or like potato chippy. Um, nothing that was too involved where I had to sit and think about it a whole bunch. But um, so yeah, and I also wanted to get something using my Sally colorway. So this is Lofty Loops Yarns. On lofty sock in the Sally colorway. So yeah, I just cast on and wanted to see where this where this went. And Sally is one of my Halloween colorways. I introduced her to the shop last last year, last Halloween, and it's just a really pale blue with loads of speckles of orange, purples, teals, and some yellows that just were pulled directly from a photo of Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas. So she has been a favorite for sure. Um, and she's made an appearance throughout the year, even since it wasn't Halloween, um, because I just, I can't not, so much fun to die. Um, and she's definitely a shop favorite. So um, I don't know how well you'll be able to see here, but there are some little cable details in here and then some ribbing. So. Like I said, this has been a great pattern. Um, I'm really excited to finally be working one of Kay's patterns. I've purchased many. I just haven't started any of them. Um, so yeah, and I just threw a little, 
a little fall leaf on there um, just for cuteness for now it's not tracking any progress or anything but this is something that I included in last month's mystery club so yes and these I'm actually I'm knitting on a US size 2 my Chiaogu uh, red lace which are my favorite needles um, Oh, and even more fun, I guess. <laughs> um, here is the cake of Sally, and I will pull it out here so you can actually see the full thing. But I was perusing Instagram, like you do, and I found these little cake minders, cake holders, and of course it has Jack and Sally on it. So I ordered one immediately. And I was like, I have to put my skein or my cake of Sally in this. Like, it, it has to be done. So, it's just, it's stretchy. It's just a stretchy tube, and it's open on both ends, and you just slip your cake in there so it doesn't get all messy. And yeah, look. So you can see there where I pulled some of those colors, the teals, the purples, the yellows, and the oranges. Um... Here is Sally in cake form. Uh, the little cake holder um, was made by One Sock Wonder on Instagram, and it is onesockwonderbags.com. And this is actually called a sheep squeezer. <laughs> so, how fun is that? Um, there are so many different styles, um, just loads of, loads of them. Please go check them out. Um, her shop is totally filled with things and they're just, they're too much fun. So I definitely want to pick up some more, um, maybe some Christmas ones. We'll see. So, yep, you just, I just put my hand in and then kind of grab the skein or the cake and just pop it in there. Ta -da. So yeah, that's. I was really excited to get that. Like I said, I was just kind of scrolling through some Instagram hashtags, um, probably knitters of Instagram or something like that, and happened to see that. And I was already knowing that I wanted to cast on Sally because Halloween is coming. Um, so I was like, oh, this is perfect. So I immediately went and ordered one and the shipping was so quick. So um, it's just one of those things that, you know, fits together perfect and makes my heart happy. And moving right along to more socks, <laughs> because who am I if I'm not knitting on like five pair of socks all at once? This is actually living in my sock talk bag that is uh, was made by Jody, who is 50% of the grocery girl, so Mrs. Brown's bags. And I got this quite a while ago. I've had this for a really long time. Um, and inside. I am knitting on my Crazy Sock Lady socks and this beautiful yarn, I'm sure you are all well aware by now, um, is from Tiny Human Knits and um, it is her self-striping in the Crazy Sock Lady colorway. And I am so smitten with this. I want like to order three or four and just make like a giant stripey sweater. I don't know if that would work. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know. I want to knit all the things. I want these colors. Just this pale pink, the pretty purple, this almost bronzy color, and then just the lightest gray. I just, I for whatever reason, those colors together are so fantastic. And I actually, I finished one of the socks last night. Yes, yesterday. Um, so I knit these toe up. I bounce back and forth. If you guys have seen the podcast before, you know I have. I just, I bounce. Whatever. Whatever sounds good at the time, that's what I go with. So I started these toe up with 16 stitches. I did my yarn over increases. Um, I'll try to include a little um, icon up here that you can click to see how I cast on for my toes because um, I figured out a little bit of a trick that seems to work really well for me. Um, so I created a little video for it. 
But yeah, and then just knit away. And actually I was having so much fun working on these that I was not even counting rows. I wasn't keeping track. I was just going and going. And then I realized I was actually knitting on it during uh, the football game yesterday and realized that, wow, it's, it's getting quite long. <laughs> so I think it's actually one of the longer socks I've ever knit just because I was just, let's go. Um, so I did finish um, one of the repeats and then started the cuff. So I, I did the cuff for a whole nother color repeat. Um, and again, two by two rib. And up here, closer to where I was getting for the cuff, I did increase uh, by four stitches just because I knew it was getting a bit longer. Um, and I was worried that it might not fit up over my calf. Um, so I did increase just a smidge um, with just a standard make one left, make one right, and I just put them in random spots. Um, so yeah, so this is actually going to be four inches, or four inches, four stitches more than what the rest of the sock is. Um, and I did knit these on US size twos, and I believe I had 64 stitches on there. If you guys are ever curious about those things, um, you can check out my Ravelry project page. I keep notes so A, I can look back and remember what the heck I was doing um, when I get ready to start the second sock and because like I said, I bounce all over the place um, and B, because I, I know I forget to mention those things um, and if you guys are interested, then I keep it all there. So, yay. Um, and here I cast on... Last night, I was heading over to my mother-in-law's because we had some family in town. So I just quick cast on the toe and took this with me. Um, so here is my progress from last night before dinner. Um, so it's it's come in the car with me. I knit on it all night last night when we were chatting with family. Um, so yeah, making good progress. And they are zooming. I am, I did put a 9-inch circular on here. Again, it goes back to my my knitting ADD. Um, I just, it felt right. <laughs> um, I hadn't used them in a while. And yeah, I just figured if I have it on a nine inch circular, I can just go and go and go and go and go. And I don't have to fiddle with moving needles for Magic Loop or DPNs. Or actually, I think my DPNs are taken up at the moment, which is probably another reason why I threw them on my nine inch circs. And these are, of course, Chiaogus. Um, That's my favorite thing to knit with. So if I can, I do. Um, and again, a US 2. So yes, I am adoring these socks. I have a feeling I will be done with them very quickly. I will be throwing in an afterthought heel. Um, probably when I get the other one done. Yeah, I'm so excited to wear these. I can't wait. I did just make like a splurge purchase for myself. Um, so this is kind of an acquisition, but not really because it's not really yarn related. Um, but I have been wanting a pair of Birkenstocks forever. And I feel like I hit 30. <laughs> it was like, oh, Birks are cool. <laughs> um, but I knew, or I've seen a lot of knitters wearing their hand knit socks. I know, socks with sandals but they're hand knit socks and I want to show them off because I knit them and if they're in my boot and under my jeans or whatever, no one's gonna see them. I'll know they're there and it makes me happy, but I mean, you can't not show these beautiful socks off, am I right? So I did get a pair of Birkenstocks finally and my, it's just my life right now is revolving around wearing these socks with my Birks. <laughs> Yes. Um, I know she's running a pre-order right now in her shop. Again, that's Tiny Human Knits. I believe she's still on Etsy. Um, actually, yes, she is still on Etsy. Um, so go check it out um, because this yarn is gorgeous and I love it. And she just needs to like mass produce it for the rest of forever because I will probably want to get more. Yeah, and in the other ways of acquisitions, because I think that's all I have to share with you knitting-wise, I do just have a couple things to show off that came in the mail. 
Um, another thing is on its way, and I wish it were here, um, but I am going to be doing a test knit for Meg of Bad Wolf Girl Studios and Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits podcast. Um, she is releasing her first ever top pattern, and it is the sea glass top, and she asked me if I'd be interested in test knitting, and I was like, absolutely, yes, I would. Um, so I quick went to order some yarn specifically for that, and maybe I can just show you guys a picture because I'm so excited for it. I can't even wait. So I went on to Madeline Tosh and ordered three skeins of the Danger Will Robinson colorway. And it's in Euro sock, um, which I don't know that I've ever knit with Mad Tosh Euro sock before. Um, so I'm kind of curious to to see what that's going to knit up like. But I think these colors, and I hope they came across. Um, if not, I'll leave all the information down below so you guys can go take a look at it on the website for yourself. Um, but I think it's going to make a really beautiful top. So I'm waiting patiently, not so patiently, for that to get in so I can start that test knit. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that. But I did get some stuff in the mail. Um, one of them is just more needles. <laughs> so these are Knitter's Pride Zings or Knit Pro Zings, which if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll see I use quite a bit. Um, I do, while I do enjoy my Chiaogus, um, if it has a cord, I really enjoy the Knit Pro Zing DPNs. I like the way they feel. They're light, they're quick. Um, only thing I would say is the needle tip isn't quite as blunt, or I'm sorry, isn't quite as uh, stabby. <laughs> it's not quite as sharp as the Chiaogu tips, um, but that's okay. They've been working out for me. Maybe you can see it better this way. They do have a little bluntness um, right at the end where they kind of square off just a bit, but um, I ordered two sets of the US 1.5s or 2.5 millimeter. I've been bouncing back and forth quite a bit between the 1s and the US 2s, and I really like, I don't even know if you guys are going to be able to see this. So here is a sock that I knit on a US 2. Here is a sock that I knit on a US 1. And while I really like the fabric that this creates, it's almost a bit too stiff. Whereas this sock feels very soft, very stretchy, very, I don't know. And it could, these are complete, two different bases too, so keep that in mind. But I don't know if you can see kind of the difference in the stitch definitions. This is a bit tighter, and I do like that. But I also enjoy this. So I was like, well, maybe I'll try a 1.5, which would be right in the middle, and I'll see what that gets me. So there's a method to my madness. <laughs> so uh, next pair of socks that I will be casting on, a brand new pair of socks, um, like I need more, they will be, I will be using those uh, 1.5s and see how that goes. Okay, so I received an email um, update from Tuft Woolens that they were having a charity um, for, sorry I'm reading the email so I don't get this wrong, um, they released a new product or a new fragrance to help the families affected by the water crisis in Flint, Michigan. And um, it looked beautiful. It's, I mean, it, from what it was described as, it was going to smell beautiful. So I'm like, you know, I could definitely use some more wool wash. Um, so I went to check it out and uh, purchased some. So this is North Shore by Tuft Woolens. And I did get the Luxury Bath Bar because I have not tried any of their human soap. Human soap sounds terrible. <laughs> soap for my body. Um, I have only tried their hand balm, their lip balm, and their uh, wool soap. So I wanted to try some of this and it smells so good. Um, what is in this? Oh, I was hoping that it would have the, what the smells are. What is it? Uh, the fragrance just says bright and watery. Um, it has grapefruit, 
bergamot, lily, and jasmine essential oils. And then there is lanolin and pink sea salt in the bath bar um, with some medium exfoliation. And oh, I just, I can't even describe how good this smells. Bright and watery is like exactly yes. So it's, it's so good. So not only did I get the bath bar um, or the, yes, the luxury bath bar, I got it in a wool soak as well. So this is the same thing just for my socks and my knits. And so uh, everything in my life will be smelling like this amazing, delicious smell. And I also wanted to try out uh, one more. And again, I had never tried their bath bars, so I just grabbed another one. But this is the black tea and bergamot scent. And I don't know, I hope it's gonna pick up, but that's what the top looks like. It just, it looks so pretty. It almost looks like I don't wanna use it. Like I need a decorative dish to just sit and then maybe as I'm like taking a bath, I'll just sit and sniff it. <laughs> the black tea and bergamot fragrance is bergamot and lime mixed with Earl Grey tea leaves and a touch of bee wax. It has activated charcoal, tea leaves, and calendula pellet. Calendula pellet. <laughs> oh, I can't. It's calendula petals um, with no exfoliation. So... Uh, they just they smell so good and I've had them sitting down here in the office getting ready to share them with you guys when I did film and every time I walk into the room it's just like I can oh it smells so good so even buying them to set somewhere and just have the fragrance it's just they're so good they're so fantastic I will go I mean I could go on and on but I won't um so again that was tuft woolens and I'm sure you're all well familiar with tuft woolens, um, but it is sock soap, uh, sock soap for all your woolens and delicate items. And if you've never used sock uh, soak before, you just run some water, you run the soap under, you lather it just a little bit um, just to get some in the water, and then you soak your knits, um, whatever it is that you're either getting ready to block or maybe you're washing like socks because you wore them. Um, you just let them soak for 10 minutes and then you rinse it out. Um, it says that you can rub the bar directly on the soles of your socks if you if you need to, if they're getting rather dirty. Um, and then you just rinse them, wring them out, dry them. Um, so, and it makes, it, it, I can't even express how good it makes things smell. So uh, if you're unfamiliar, please check out Tuft Woolens. I'll leave a link in the description box below to get over there. Um, but otherwise, like I said, you guys, gosh, we're at 30 minutes. I told you this was going to be a quick one. I've just been knitting away on socks. Um, I have been doing a bit of spinning. Uh, I, if you're interested, I've shared some spinning progress on Instagram. You can go check those out. Um, I am still working away on the bats that I purchased from Casual Fashion Queen, and I actually took one of the bats and tried to make some roll eggs with my new blending board uh, out of those. So I have a picture on Instagram of how that turned out. So if you're interested, uh, or maybe I'll try to pop it in here for you guys, but I wasn't quite sure what I was doing. So yay, but they're spinning. Um, I've spun a few, so, and roll eggs are so much fun. They're so little that it's very much like, oh, I can do one more. Oh, I can do just one more. Oh, just one more, it'll be fine. And then before you know it, you've like blown through half of the roll eggs. So it's very fun. Um, I'm enjoying it a lot. And um, so I guess let's just talk some shop stuff real quickly and then I will uh, be going on about my day. Actually, I'm heading to the dye pots. Um, I should be there now, really, but... Um, I was hoping to have a shop update this weekend um, with some more fall stuff and rolling out Sally again for Halloween and some other Halloween colors. Um, but like I said, my life has just swept me up in this raging current um, and I'm just keeping my head above water at this point with family things and stuff like that. So um, we... Uh, or I, I should say, I, I did not want to just throw a couple things in there this weekend, so I think I'm going to postpone, and next Saturday I will be having a larger shop update, 
And I do want to go back to just for at least now, um, now that we're rolling into Halloween and Christmas time, I will be going to scheduling updates again, um, just to kind of keep my sanity and then give you guys a heads up of when you might be able to expect some of the limited colorways that I do release in the next few months. Um, so Sally will definitely be happening and Sally 2.0 will be happening and I can tell you that it's going to be in the form of stripes. I am so excited. I hope this works out like it, I'm dreaming it up in my head but um, that's something to look forward to. September clubs will be shipping out if you have gotten in on the September club. I will be sending those out this next week. That'll be really fun and then as soon as those ship out I will open up uh, October's, and October's, I have a feeling, is going to be very Halloween-y. Um, so I've got some ideas cooking up in my brain for that. Um, and gosh, yeah, I'm just, I'm here, I'm here for fall. I'm ready for Halloween. It's my favorite, uh, my favorite holiday of all of the holidays, and I'm just, I'm ready. I'm ready to throw some dye on some yarn and come up with some new fun things. And I do want to mention that again, I have sweater kits up available in the shop as pre-orders. Um, if there are anything, any other things that you see in the shop that you would like a sweater's quantity of, I will be opening a, uh, a form on the website that you can go to from the main menu um, where you can request a sweater's quantity of um, anything you can pick the base you can pick the colorway um, assuming that it's in my regular repeatable colorway selection um, and then I will work with you to PayPal you an invoice for that um, and then get it dyed up ASAP I'll put you um, in the in the queue in the dye queue so um, that will be a thing that's happening I know a lot of you guys are knitting on sweaters as am I um, so I'm going to let that roll for a while and see how it goes. This is my uh, new fall colorway that I released. I will be dyeing up more of this. Um, I think I just have some on Sport right now and Glitz. Um, it has been sold out on Sock. So I will be dyeing up more of this. There will be more fall inspired colors coming. I have a couple of Honeydew in the shop, which is a new one. And actually, I think these would be beautiful together. So this is Honeydew. And by honeydew, it's not like the melon honeydew, because I know that that is green. Honeydew is like a honeydew list, like the list that I would like to leave for my husband. <laughs> so it's honeydew, honeydew. So these are really fun. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm ready to roll out all of the fall colorways. So um, lots of stuff still in the shop. Oh, and... Gosh, I almost forgot to mention, if you are participating in FiberShare, um, if you are unfamiliar with FiberShare, uh, I'll leave a link down below, but it is essentially a worldwide massive, super fun swap um, between different hobbies. So knitter swapping with knitters, spinner swapping with spinners, if you're a weaver, if you're, oh my gosh, there's everything, there's so many things. Um, Signups are closed and we've had our partner um, matchups. So this round is getting rolling and I've already done some shopping for my partner. Um, but I highly suggest getting in on the next round if you can. Um, but I am running a coupon code in the shop right now if you are purchasing some Lofty Loops yarns for your partner. And that is, uh, I believe it's Dare to Fiber Share, all one word. Um, if you go to the FiberShare website, you can see the list of all the vendors on the website that are offering up this coupon code for the swap. So make sure that you uh, check that out and use that if you are trying to purchase some yarn for your partner. Otherwise, I think that's where I'm going to leave you. Um, again, I apologize for missing last week, um, but I am hoping to go back to our regularly scheduled program of once a week. Um, but just fall, man, with the kiddos, and oh, it's the craziest time of year for us. Um, so we'll see. I do feel like I have more to show if I wait two weeks, um, so let me know if you guys prefer the once a week or if you guys would rather see more things in a, like, every two weeks update. Um, 
But anyway, if you stuck with me so far, uh, I want to thank you. If you are not already subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I am getting near to uh, a milestone, and as soon as I hit that milestone, I will be having a massive giveaway that I already have stuff set aside for. So I'm um, getting really excited for that. Um, if you would give the video a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. That lets me know I'm on the right track, as well as lets YouTube know that you are um, interested in videos like this, and it will help the algorithm suggest uh, videos in the same vein for you. So um, it just gives both of us a little bit of a boost, and uh, it's much appreciated. I love hearing your guys' feedback. Um, I love reading comments. Please comment below. Um, ask me questions. I respond. I read them all. Um, and I love hearing feedback from you guys. So if for any reason you do hit the thumbs down, because I know some people do, um, if you're hitting thumbs down for a very specific reason, other than you just happened to stumble on a knitting podcast and backtracked and didn't know why you were here and you hated it and you ran, um, if you do have feedback, please, you can feel free to email that to me if you don't want it to be public. Um, or leave, you know, a comment with constructive criticism because I, I want to know what you guys are thinking and feeling and um, I'm always improving. So uh, otherwise, that's where I'm going to leave you. And uh, oh, I did want to mention um, before I sign off that I think some of the new Halloween colorways are going to have something to do with the Sanderson sisters. I'll leave you to think about that. So, all right, guys, have a good rest of your week. Take care and happy knitting. Bye.